Okay, folks, welcome back. I hope you had a nice weekend. This is the weekend commentary and lecture on March 28th, 2021 for the ICT Mentorship. I'm going to do some light general commentary. It is a holiday week for me coming up. Lecture on interbank traders mindset. All right, here's the dollar index. This is our daily chart. And we have our old volume imbalance turn fair value gap. We traded through the first one here and above this buy side liquidity. So far we found some support at the premium end of this imbalance. So we'll be looking for the market to try to make an attempt to get up into this level over the coming days and weeks. It can trade back inside of this. We have a volume imbalance in here that it could tap into once more. I'd like to see it just trade into the buy side liquidity here and up into this imbalance. Hourly chart for the dollar index. Nice consequent encroachment as I mentioned in the previous discussion. Buy side liquidity. That looks like it might get tapped soon. The only concern I have is if it needs to retrace. See this range in here? Divide that in half and extend it out in time. Now worst case scenario, dollar needs to come back deeper than I would like to see it trade back to. The equilibrium of this range, we'll call it uh, 9195, 9190 in that vicinity. Price needs to stay above that to remain bullish for me. Otherwise, I'm looking for higher prices. Euro dollar. We went below the low here. So far, we haven't taken the sell side liquidity below this low yet. And there is sell side liquidity resting below these lows, as I mentioned before. I think that's the draw on liquidity on an intermediate term basis. So any up close candles on the daily chart in my mind sets the stage for a later sell-off much like I covered in a YouTube channel lesson here and you can see it here as well one day it, could, it can happen like we have in this market rally here we had two down close candles prior to it making a higher high here we could have another up day or two and then make an attempt to trade lower and ultimately aiming down here that's what I'm thinking Euro dollar hourly chart. So far we come back up and filled in this sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. Does it need to trade back up to this level here? I don't think it does. It would be better if it didn't, if it just remained heavy. But should it need to go up to another level higher than this? This down close candle right in here. That's mitigation. We've already worked it here. They may want to go back up into it once more. If we trade back above this low, there's really nothing in here that has my interest until here, which would be way up in here. To me, this doesn't seem likely, but I'm looking for lower prices, let's put it that way. All right, British pound versus US dollar. This is daily chart. A bullish order block here. I'm using the wick. And you can also use the open. Both of those stand out in time. The body's respecting the order block. Trades into it. Came back up into this imbalance right in here. So from this low to this high. Just traded up into that. About 90% of that. We have last three up close candles here. Prior to this decline. That's your bearish order block. That low right there. Extend out in time. We're trading at that now. Also closing in this final portion could be reasonably expected going into Sunday, Monday. And then we'll look to see if it wants to have a, a lower reaction after that. All right, here's the British pound versus US dollar on the hourly chart. There's those relative equal highs I said we would most likely run into. And we did that on Friday. Now the interbank traders mindset 
teaching is going to cover all of this in here. But for now, looking at the hourly chart, the small little remaining portion of sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, back to this old low, which is mitigation. I'm not looking at that low. I'm looking at that low because it has the imbalance there. It just looks like it's trying to reach up right before it goes lower. That's how I interpret this right now. Obviously, Sunday's opening could change all of that, but for right now, it still looks weak to me. All right, here is the lesson for this week. Now, if you recall, as I mentioned just a moment ago, I was stating that the British pound could most likely come up there and run those relative equal highs out. I also taught that the weekly range is what I'm trying to press upon you as a narrative or context. Now there's several ways as a trader you can work with a narrative or frame context around your trade executions or your trade bias. But I try to keep things simple even though it may not always seem simple with all the things that I teach you. But it all gets back to the weekly range. What are we trying to do for the weekly range? Is it most likely going to expand higher or is it most likely going to expand lower? We are not trying to predict the weekly closing price. That's not what I'm trying to do here. As a community, I'm trying to teach you how to look for the expansion on that weekly range. Now, this is a weekly chart of the British pound versus the US dollar. And this is the week that just transpired. The only down close candle ahead of all this price run up here is this one right there. I'm annotating the opening price and the high. So that small little range in there, that's what I'm extending out in time. Here's the high and here's the opening price. The market trades down into that on a weekly range basis. So the open for the week opened here, small little movement above the opening price. Then all the expansion was on the downside and it reached into this area right here. Why did I say that the cable market would likely trade up into those relative equal highs? Well, a few things. Namely, we were trading into Thursday, which technically makes the low of the week most of the time. Generally, in the New York session on Thursday. Friday can tend to see a continuation in the existing trend, but we had moved a lot already for the week for cable. So at one point, this was a pretty significant down week. So it was over, what is that? A hundred, almost 200 pips or so for the week. That's not bad. That's a pretty respectable range. But it trades down into a weekly discount PD array in the form of a bullish order block. And it does so on the day of the week, Thursday, when we tend to make the low of the week, if it's been bearish. Let's go further into this discussion and look at the daily chart. Here's that daily chart with the high and the opening price of that weekly bullish order block. You can see we didn't trade down to the actual opening price, but we did work inside that range and traded back up into this imbalance between this high and this low. And here is that bearish order block on the daily chart, which is these three consecutive up close candles. Whenever there's consecutive candles, we always consider the entire range of all three consecutively. This low to this high, we have a fair value gap here in the form of a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. The market trades up to not only 90% or so of the imbalance, all of this here, small little portion of that shaded area hasn't been closed in yet, but we did trade up into the bearish order block there. So this response here to here should not be surprising. Look what it's done all week. Moving down into the hourly chart, the same shaded blue area for that daily fair value gap, sell side and bounce, buy side and efficiency. 
we can see how the market trades down into that weekly bullish order block here. This is the high of that weekly order block and the opening of the weekly bearish candle, which makes the bullish order block. Trades down on Thursday, creating the low of the week, and then starts to rally up. Here again are those relative equal highs I said we would most likely try to trade up into. Looking at the weekly range across the daily range division, we have Friday's range trading, Thursday's range trading, Wednesday's range trading, Tuesday's range trading, Monday's range trading. So clearly we had the open Judas swing up, sell off, continue lower, making the low what day of the week? Thursday. It could have went lower on euro dollar on Friday, but notice in the commentaries I stated that cable has already done most of its work on the downside, so euro dollar could have the opportunity to catch up to what cable has already done. All of that was framed on this idea here. We traded down into the low and made a, the lower low than what we have seen on Wednesday's trading. And it's in the first half of Thursday's trading. Market trades back up to an old level relative to the higher time frames, as I mentioned. So let's take a deeper look into what's been going on in here and how we can frame this whole idea with picking the low of the week, trusting that the market has most likely made its move for the week, and then how we can anticipate retracements or reversal patterns for Thursday and Friday's trading. If you look at the range high for the week on Monday and drop a fib from that high down to this low, and you highlight the 0.2 and 0.3 levels on your fib that's 30 percent and 20 percent of the range notice what's occurring here the 30s laying right at those relative equal highs so the market has a strong tendency to want to draw back up into that at the very minimum even if it would have went there and went lower this is tradable now if this occurs on a friday that's a classic tgif scenario TGIF, you can actually search that on the forum and you can pull up the lessons that's found in the commentaries where I teach that. But Thursday, we create the low of the week. The immediate concern was these relative equal highs and it also overlaps with 20 to 30% of the weekly range. So this is a very strong candidate for it to draw back up into. The market creates that low, rallies up, comes back down into redelivered rebalance. Bullish order block here. The market trades higher, opens here, and then redelivers it again. So forget this candle. Forget this candle. The next candle's low to this candle's high. Redelivered rebalance. Consequent encroachment. There's your buy. Rally. Optimal trade entry. Continues higher. Rebalance to a fair value gap bullish order block there. Optimal trade entry. Runs again and then optimal trade entries as well. So if you consider the weekly range, this is what it looks like. We have the high forming on Monday. The opening price trades up. And that would be seen here. We open. Watch the weekly range form throughout the week. It's opening, trades up. Retail does what in here? Chase it, buy it. Think it's gonna keep going higher. Then the market trades back down below the opening price. Once it breaks below that opening price, it starts to rush away and starts moving away from that opening price. So all this decline takes several days to get to until we get to Thursday here. We run just below that low here and below these relative equal lows where sell side liquidity would rest. All we're doing is looking for this expansion on the weekly range and we're trying to trade hopefully as close as we can if not above the opening price when we're bearish 
and we keep holding a bias until we get to around Thursday, New York session. This is a graphic depiction of that. This whole concept here is essentially my mentorship. Now there's lots of ways to skin the cat inside of all this portion of the range. That's also mentorship. But the initial foundation to everything you're learning stems and leans heavily on this premise here, the weekly range. Notice there's no depiction of the closing price because I'm not trying to teach you to believe you can do that consistently. You don't need that. If you know it's likely to move lower and you work inside that narrative, there's lots to do. There's lots of trades in here. It may not look like it right away because it's an hourly chart, but there's lots of trades in there. You break that down into a one minute chart, you have multiple ways to scale into that, take multiple trades and do very well. So that's our weekly range visually stripped down, looking at the open, the Judas. This is where smart money comes in the marketplace in the form of interbank sellers. That is your smart money traders selling short at the opening price or any rally up. When they're doing that short, they're not doing this short just to get out below the opening price and call it a day or call it profitable trading. They're focusing on the time element that I'm teaching you here, Thursday. And this is where interbank buyers step into the marketplace. They sell short up here. They ride all this out, maybe adding more along the way. And then they buy down here. Why are they buying? To collapse their shorts they have initiated up here. So the mindset of you as a trader should be that of trying to adopt the same mindset that interbank traders have. Keeping that focus in that range right there on the premise of short-term trades, day trades, and scalps in that direction. Why? Because the interbank trader's mindset focuses on the weekly bearish institutional order flow. By keeping things in that perspective, you do not lose sight of what it is it's trying to do, what it's reaching for, and you don't second guess yourself. If you get stopped out, then your stop is placed in the wrong place, or you're just wrong. And that's the logic that you need to agree on and just accept it. Don't wrestle with it. Why argue with it? If you get stopped out, okay, that's not the end of your career. Does it change the underlying narrative that's being shown here? Because if it does upset that, then either you need to sit on the sidelines or maybe look for a reversal. But it doesn't necessarily always mean reverse. That implies that you always have to be in the marketplace. And that's not what I'm teaching you either. So we have the range here, the weekly chart or open high, low close hypothetical depiction of the high the low and where the opening was and inside that range that's what you're working with it's pretty respectable over 200 pips but on Thursday at New York midnight that's the countdown until we get to 11 o'clock on Thursday's New York session this is when your weekly low is most likely going to form so it gives you a time window when to anticipate that very thing occurring. And as you can see, we create the low of the week here between these two time windows. This is 11 o'clock in the morning, New York time. This is midnight, New York time. Now you might be thinking, okay, well that's a pretty sizable range. You know, you have essentially 11 hours to, to call the low and pat yourself on the back. It's not just this alone, but it is the most important function behind how IPTA creates the low of the week when it's bearish. The element of time is framed here. So I'm looking for the logic to justify why a low has formed or when it will form. This is the time window. We trade below the lows here and below that old low on the 24th. So we made a lower low on Thursday and rejected. This high has been broken here. So we have a shift in market structure. 
relative equal highs. I told you we were going to make an attempt to run through those. Redelivered rebounds. Consequent encroachment of that. That's a long. And rallies. And trades all the way up in through Friday. Back above relative equal highs here for buy side liquidity. I want you to go back and look at your charts when weekly ranges. This is a really good study for you. Go back and look at any pair, any market. And when it was weak or trading lower for the week, it doesn't necessarily mean it needs to close on the low or near the low. But a, a sizable or respectable range expansion on the downside on the weekly range or weekly candle. If you frame it out like this, you're going to be stunned to see how many times this forms. So your first element is time and then price. What's the element of price? Well, we ran stops here and then we have a shift in market structure. So we're off to the races in New York. We can trust the long from, from this area here to run these out and see if it wants to go higher as a TGIF trade where it trades back up into the weekly range. And it does so here swimmingly. When you don't think about things like that or have the logic behind it, you're left with just this. With no rhyme or reason, why is price doing what it's doing? And then books and educators will tell you to put indicators over top of this because the indicator is going to tell you something and it's not going to tell you anything that's true because it's taking the data that's already happened and twisting it and contorting it through mathematical expressions and then you're building a religion around it you might be laughing like I am but that's really what it is it's a religion you're believing something with no basis behind it there's no facts to it and indicators and that logic fails a lot if you don't look at the indicator and you just rely on what price is showing you it's easy to have faith in that because you're trusting price price is not going to lie to you if you understand time and price algorithmic theory you're looking for things to communicate to you within a time window with a specific logic and as you learn more and more about this approach to reading the tape and reading the marketplace you'll grow to a greater appreciation of how controlled how specific these markets behave and none of it is random so hopefully you found something in this teaching insightful i'll touch base with you again uh, april 1st 2021 is when the video for the midweek lesson or lecture will post. And the reason why I'm doing that, it allows me to start a fresh thread on April and not put something on as the last day of March. I want to use a new area in the thread for April 2021. So it'll accomplish two things. Not only will it give you a video midweek, just one day later, but it'll also help me keep things streamlined inside the forum. So until I talk to you then, enjoy your weekend, be safe.